This is Real Talk with Real People. My name is Avery, and today on episode Dose, we will focus on my story. I'm about to get 100% real with y'all in hopes that somebody out there, anybody out there, can feel uplifted. Trigger warning, my story will focus on anxiety, depression, suicide, and a lot of ups and downs. I'll turn this into a three-part video in hopes that my fellow brothers and sisters struggling with focusing on something for a long time can stay tuned in. With that being said, let's get the ball rolling. I was born on August 20th, 1994 in Provo, Utah. My father was born and raised in Mexico, and my mother was born in Garden Grove, California. I grew up in Saratoga Springs, Utah. That's where I call home. I'm the oldest and have two brothers and a sister. I was blessed to always be surrounded by great people. My mom and dad always remind me about how people have always been drawn to me. And to be honest, it's kind of hard. My mom always tells me how whenever she dropped me off at school, kids would run up to me and try to talk. She was surprised when it was always looking like I didn't care and I kind of shied away from the attention. It can come off that I think that I'm better than people, but that is not the case. I've always had a lot going on in my mind since I was a kid, as well as an issue with trusting people. My mom also reminds me of how I did not fit in my kindergarten desk because I was, and still am, very tall. My earliest memories begin when I was around 12 years old, and I guess with that said, that's where this story will begin. I always wanted to be an Olympic bobsledder. Cool Runnings was always on repeat at my house. I even had a lucky egg that I kept in my pocket, just like the man Sanka. The dream of becoming an Olympic bobsledder was shut down real quick though, when I realized I might not fit in a sled with my fellow teammates. It also was super expensive. That's when my mom threw me into basketball. I hated basketball. I remember not wanting to play. Looking back, it was because of the anxiety I had. The anxiety of failure, letting others down, and etc. You see, being really tall also means people have high expectations. That weight on my shoulders was always too much to carry. However, it didn't take long for me to start to enjoy basketball, and it also turned out that I was pretty good. I got noticed at a young age and was always asked to play on different AAU teams. I also was asked to play with older kids. On the outside, that seems like a fantastic opportunity for me, but for me, that was hell. It brought me so much anxiety. Having to live up to the expectations was too much for me to handle. It took the fun of playing basketball away from me. I always was good enough to play, but when people saw me in playing in more intimate settings, they were shook at my abilities. In those intimate settings, I wasn't playing against scrubs. I would play against top tier athletes and compete. People who truly knew me knew how good I was and were always surprised to see the difference between when I was playing with the homies, you know, and playing organized basketball. People have always believed in me and used the word potential very often when describing me. The tricky part is that you have to also believe in yourself, and I never have, even still to this day. Living up to that expectation has always been very hard. Still to this day, I struggle with it. Around this age, I had a life-changing experience that still leaves me scarred. I had to get a physical so I could attend a scout camp. I remember that something felt off. While the doctor was checking me out, he seemed concerned. After he was done checking me out, he asked if he could talk to my mom in private. I was asked to sit in the lobby. When she came out, it looked like she had seen a ghost. The car, the car ride home was quiet. If I remember correctly, when we got home, she went into her room, closed the door, and I believe she started crying. She called my dad to tell him the news. I didn't really understand what was happening, but the following day, I had a basketball game. I was a part of a club team that my dad coached. My brother and I were on the team, as well as our closest friends. I remember my brother and friends jumping out the van, I was about to hop out as well when my parents said they needed to talk to me. The next part was a blur, still to this day. All I remember hearing them saying was that I might not be able to ever play basketball again. We left the van and I was benched. 
I normally started, but my dad wouldn't let me play. While in the van, my parents had informed me that the doctor believed that I had something called Marfan syndrome. Marfan syndrome is an inherited disorder that affects connective tissue, the fibers that support and anchor your organs and other structures in your body. Marfan syndrome most commonly affects the heart, eyes, blood vessels, and skeleton. Since basketball is a physical sport, the fear was that my aorta wouldn't be able to handle the constant physicality that the game offers. From that point on, I had to go to a cardiologist who specialized in Marfan syndrome. Luckily, after my first visit, I was told that my aorta had no dilation, which meant I could keep playing basketball. The catch was that I would have to go back and get checked every year from age 12 to 18 in order to be cleared to play. I remember the doctor specifically saying that because, this, because of this, I'll never be able to play college basketball. From that point on, I never went all out in basketball. I was always fine being good enough to be on the team. I also created a bad habit of not trying in life. At the time, I felt like, what was the point of trying? I'm not going to be able to play college basketball anyways. That's all that I wanted to do. I went to a charter school from grades 7 and 8. That's where I made many friends that I'm still in contact with to this day. I played on the middle school team, which was fun. Ninth grade, I switched over to another charter school, Rockwell Academy. I played on the varsity basketball team in ninth grade. We won the 2A state championship our first year. You know, that was pretty cool, but to be honest, it wasn't as big as a big of a deal as it seems because 2A is really small and not competitive. My parents then gave me the option to go to a regular high school for my 10th grade year. I decided to do that. That's when the varsity coach at the high school took notice of me. I remember walking into my first open gym for the high school. Since I went to a charter school for middle school and then also ninth grade, I didn't know anyone except a few homies that also left charter and my boy Felix who I met in sixth grade and I kept in contact with throughout the middle school years. He introduced me to everybody he knew. The first person I remember him introducing me to was Parker Hertz. If I could use one word to describe Parker Hertz, it would be a clown. On the real though, Parker's a good dude and a good friend and a good person. And funny enough, I just reconnected with him. It's like we never stopped talking. He's a great guy. During that first open gym, that's when the varsity coach put his arm around me and put me under his wing and had me playing with the big boys. Talk about big anxiety. I remember wanting to play with the sophomores instead of the seniors. People would die to be in my position, but all I wanted to do was have fun. Playing up gave me too much anxiety, which caused me to perform below expectation. I always looked forward to being able to play with my own age though. Anytime that was allowed, I felt like a dog off the leash when I was able to play with the other sophomores. Whenever the varsity coach let me play with the other sophomores, he always reminded me just to make sure I didn't get hurt. I can remember during summer tournaments, hiding in my parents' car so I didn't have to play the varsity games. It was that scary for me. I just wanted to play with my friends. It also didn't help that there were two kids on the varsity team that I couldn't stand. They knew how to make me feel unwelcome, and that just made it a lot harder for me to want to play with them. 11th grade came around and I got to play with Coach Sikander. I still to this day don't really know what he thinks about me, but I thought he was the coolest cat in the world. Mans was from Brooklyn, New York and brought that swag to Utah with him. I was super excited to play with him. He was a great coach. I still had to play varsity, but when I was able to play with Sikander, I felt I was at my best and I had the most fun. The biggest lesson that I learned from him was this. Avery, I don't care about what you did during the summer. Actions speak louder than words, so let's see it on the court. I still to this day remember that and use that quote with the youth I work with. I can dive into the context of that quote a little bit later, but it really helped shape a big part of my life. High school was a great time. I had many friends and I feel like I didn't fit in any particular crowd I just got along with everybody. 
I would like to think that I was a ladies' man. That's what I do, Steve. Uncle Vance, all you have to do is hitch up your pants. Bend your knees and stick out your pelvis. I'm telling you, baby, it's better than a <laughs> But no cap, I wasn't. I don't think my friends were either, and besides, we were all focused on basketball. Basketball was our girl. We would play every Friday and Saturday night until midnight at the Legacy Center or at a local church where we low-key sometimes broke into. Those were some intense games, but also some of the best. I did all right in school. I really liked English and history. I despised math. And that was the only reason why I almost didn't graduate. I just learned differently than most people. The education system is set up in a way to teach one style that connects with one type of person. I'm a hands-on person and I enjoy movement and I can't sit still. The summer of my junior year, going into senior, was when I decided to make big changes. I was also super tall, but super skinny. We're talking 6'7", 150 pounds skinny. I would get destroyed in the post because I was so weak and skinny. Because of this, I quickly hated playing as a center. Everyone that knew me really knew that I was a four or a forward. My nickname was Mexican KD Trilo, KD for Kevin Durant. I still go by that name. I worked out every day that summer, practiced every day. In three months, I went from 150 to 185. I was dunking on fools, catching lobs. <laughs> Throwing the ball off the glass. There you go. Dunking it. I was ready for my senior year. I remember the first day of school I told Coach Sikander, Coach, I gained 35 pounds of muscle. I can dunk like nobody's business. Catch lobs. I practice every day and I'm ready to own fools. That's when he said, Avery, I don't care about what you did. Actions speak louder than words, so let's see it on the court. Well, he never got to see it on the court. I made the senior team as a senior, but shortly after I quit. Nobody knew why, so feel special that I'm finally coming out about it. Essentially, there was a straw that broke the camel's back. One of the assistant coaches pulled my boy Moseman and me over at practice and felt the need to tell us how all we are needed for is rebounding. That the crowd won't notice what we are doing, but he and the coaches will. While he was talking to us, I had my jersey in my mouth because I was tired. We had just got done running. He pulled it out of my mouth and said, don't be disrespectful. I don't know if homeboy was trying to be motivational, but that, that was it for me. You see, the anxiety met its capacity. I was done. I couldn't take it no more. I let a lot of people down. So many people believed in me when in reality, I never believed in myself. So many people put money into me getting trained, going to camps, and lots more. I remember my parents were big mad. It was a dark time. All my friends were on the team and always busy because of basketball. I was truly alone. I love my parents, and what I'm about to say is in no way intended to taint their image. I've talked a lot about basketball, but there was a lot going on behind the scenes. I grew up with people always fighting in my house. It was my mom and dad going at each other or them going at my brother Arius. I only ever got in trouble when my math grades were low, usually an F, and the teacher would call my mom telling her. I still hate math. Because of the constant contention at home, I grew to hate contention. Whenever I felt that energy coming, I would go down into my room and isolate. I still to this day hate contention is a big trigger of mine. Money was always an issue. My dad is the hardest worker I know. Man's had three or four jobs at one point, I believe. He always did what he could to make sure we always had what we needed. He also instilled in me the understanding of hard work at a young age. Freaking Mexicans, man. <laughs> this dude had me mowing the lawn at eight years old with a lawnmower that wasn't even self-propelled. He had a cleaning business where he could clean million dollar homes. I would occasionally tag along with him. He might not know this, but those will always be great memories of mine, especially cleaning model homes on Friday nights till Saturday morning. We'd work the night away. 
Those will always be some of my fondest memories with my dad. My mom struggled with a lot of health issues that put stress on the home. She still does. It's not her fault. All I can say is she's a tough woman. She has been through a lot. Her story is hers, and so I won't share hers or my dad's. Overall, they did the best they could in raising us kids, and that's all anyone could ever ask for. Nobody is perfect in parenting. My mom created a lot of really good memories for me and my siblings growing up, despite the lack of money and chaos at home. What I'm about to share might turn some people off. I hope that's not the case. I want this channel to be a place where I can interview people of all backgrounds and beliefs. A judgment-free zone. I'm a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. There are a lot of negative stigmas around the church, and with time I hope to break those down. This channel will focus on a lot of things that have negative stigmas attached to them. I really want to break all stigmas down. When I was 18 years old, I decided to serve a mission for the church. I was called to serve in the Canada Winnipeg Mission, which covered the provinces of Manitoba, Saskatchewan, part of Ontario, and then the top of Minnesota. For those who don't know what serving a mission means, I essentially had the opportunity to serve people in different service opportunities within the different communities that I lived. If anybody ever asked, why I was there or what I was doing, then I would share with them my religious beliefs and teach them more about Jesus Christ if they wanted to know more. My style was to never force my beliefs on other people. I won't dive too deep into that experience, but I will say that the opportunity to serve people in another country made me who I am today. I met many amazing people that I call family I got to experience things that many 18, 19, and 20 year olds will never experience. I lived in Canada from 2013 to 2015. While living in Canada, I met new people every day. I got to hear their stories and their struggles. I remember a lot of people talking about their anxiety and depression and other mental disorders. I was always super intrigued by their stories because I felt relief. You see, everything they were telling me were things that I had dealt with my whole life. But I never knew other people also dealt with those things. I thought the crippling anxiety I experienced was something everybody dealt with. I thought the moments of severe sadness I had were normal. I was shook to find out that yes, it was normal in the sense that many deal with anxiety and depression, but that it wasn't normal, if you know what I mean. I'm gonna stop here. This is my life story up until the age of 20. Of course, I didn't cover everything. Like I briefly mentioned, I struggled with depression, but we'll dive into that on the next episode. I'm currently 29 and have more to share that will be directly focused on my mental health. From severe anxiety and depression to self-harm and suicide. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Please share this with anyone you feel could benefit from my story. Let's continue to have real talk, and I can't wait to have real talk with real people in the near future.